Last week, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, or IIHS, second only to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA in the US, when it comes to vehicle safety crash testing, issued a special status report focusing on semi-autonomous driver assistance systems. In it, IIHS experts laid out some of the problems facing semi-autonomous driver assistance features today, highlighting some of its own in-house testing as well as bringing in data from other agencies to reiterate that semi-autonomous driver assistance systems offered in today's vehicles aren't as safe as we might think they are. Additionally, it laid out its intent to move forward its own rating system for these features so that consumers can truly understand how capable or not driver assistance systems are. Which leads us to the question, do we need better education on semi-autonomous systems and do we need to start informing consumers with safety ratings moving forwards? At the moment, semi-autonomous driving systems are in something of a grey area. Officially, Fully autonomous vehicle operation is allowed in some countries and not in others. In some countries like the US, each state has its own regulations on autonomous vehicle operation, something the US government is trying to clear up to produce a single standard across the whole country. But that's dealing with the legality of operating a system, not deciding if it's safe or not. And right now, while Euro and Kappa NHTSA note the inclusion of advanced driver assistance features like Tesla's Autopilot, Nissan's ProPilot and Volvo's IntelliSafe, for example, they don't yet have specific tests to see just how good these features are at doing what the automakers say they do. Revisiting the details of a fatal accident which took place in March this year when a Tesla Model X operating in autopilot mode collided with the crash barrier at speed in Mountain View, killing its driver, and also referencing numerous other examples of Teslas and other cars with similar semi-autonomous driver assistance features crashing or becoming confused about road markings, the IIHS highlighted the need for drivers to stay alert when using such systems and its right to do so. Under the SAE Standards for Defining Autonomous and Semi-Autonomous Operation, all vehicles today with apparent self-driving or semi-autonomous features are actually no more than level two autonomous. This means they can combine multiple assistance features, such as cruise control and lane keep assist, using information from the world around them, but they operate, and I quote, with the expectation that the human driver performs all remaining aspects of the dynamic driving task. The fatal accident earlier this year in Arizona involving a self-driving Uber prototype and the lack of driver attention only highlights this risk. Of course, unless SAE autonomous vehicle safety levels are made compulsory parts of driver education programs around the world, no one's really going to know what they are. And there has to be a better way of conveying how safe various car safety assistance systems are, which is one of the reasons why IIHS says it's working on developing its own in-house rating system for semi-autonomous driver assistance features that seemingly take over the driving for you. In preparation for that, it highlighted some of the operation of popular semi-autonomous level two systems in operation today, testing vehicles from BMW, Tesla, Mercedes-Benz and Volvo. It recorded how many times active lane keeping assistance systems performed by driving each car along three different sections of road, a total of six times. Each section included both hills and curbs. The Tesla Model 3 did best in all of those curve tests, staying within its lane on all of the 18 curves. The Model S nearly did as well, overcorrecting once to cross the inside line on one curve. All of the other cars taking steering tests required driver input to successfully navigate the course. But on the hill portion of the test, those same cars fared less well. The Model S particularly tended to get confused about lane markings when cresting a hill, something that many other vehicles from other automakers also struggled with. The reason? Semi-autonomous systems need to see the road ahead in order to figure out where lane markings are. And when you crest a hill, they're not always visible. Another thing noted by testers was that when they were following a slower vehicle, which thus blocks lane markings from being seen by the car, all of the systems had a habit of following the lead vehicle if it began to exit the highway they were on, since the car uses the car in front for lane positioning when it can't see the road ahead. I've not got the time to go through all the tests here, each car fared differently in each test, but I will link to them below for you to see yourself. The too long didn't read takeaway though is simple. No level two system in use today is completely perfect and so we as drivers need to pay more attention when using them.
The IIHS says that it continues to test these systems and while it acknowledges that they have the potential to save nearly 8,000 lives a year, reiterates that a fully autonomous production vehicle that can go anywhere, anytime, isn't available yet and won't be for some time. With that in mind, would you like to see actual testing of autonomous driver assistance features, ranking how accurately they respond in the real world, rather than just noting that those features exist on a particular vehicle? How would you conduct the tests and how would you represent that in a form consumers could easily understand? Let me know your thoughts below. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Subscribe to both of our channels and if you fancy it, support us by using one of the two links below or by buying something from our shop. Thanks for watching and as always, keep evolving.